So hello and welcome. Today we have something very special. This is a QOATS Z77MXQOAOS. This is a very special mainboard that I have never heard before. This are the specifications that are on the box. And as far as I know, this is a product of Gigabyte. So this was sent to me by someone from Sweden who asked me if I could have a look at this board. So this is Z77, which is an older Intel platform, which is like the second or third Intel gen, I think. This, the special thing about this is that this is supposed to be able to run Mac OS, if I'm not mistaken, if I got the person right, because this got sent in from Sweden all the way here from someone who has two of these boards, one working condition and one this one which is not working and he couldn't really tell me anything about what was not working on this board. We got a quest of finding out what is wrong with this. I've never worked on this board before and the very interesting thing is this thing has Thunderbolt on this old of an Intel board which is like really interesting. Yeah but in general it looks like basically every other board from this generation. So one thing I can say is there are some really big ICs that I wouldn't expect on this board. Like, okay, this is the Super IO that you can see here. The special thing is this is not the normal Super IO that we know, but a little bit older of a design. But this is to be expect expected because this is a Z77. Um, Another thing that I wouldn't expect is whatever this chip here is. This is some sort of Texas Instruments chip, if you can see it there. And I have no idea what that could be for. Also, there's a giant chip in the top left here. Which I also don't know what that could be. Uh, this might be our VRM controller but I'm not too sure. Yeah. But everything else looks to be normal. We have dual BIOSes main and backup here, which is interesting. And I think we um, do the same thing as we always do. First thing I want to do is take a look at the socket and I can already see a bent pin, at least one. Yeah, like there, there you can see it. So we got to look into that and for that let's go under the microscope together. And here we can see the one band pin that we have. So let's see, I'm going to be taking it and trying to pull it back into its position. It's going to be somewhere closer to the right here. So this should be enough. It is not perfect, but this should be enough for contacting well. And now let's have a quick look at the rest of the socket. If we already have a single damage, there might be more. And I found something that looks a little bit off as well. As you can see, this pin here is a little bit not in its position where it should be. But I think this one would be fine still. I'm just going to slightly touch him up, but I think that should be fine. I'm going to see if I see something else now. And we have another one just at the bottom here that has a very similar problem. As you can see, this one is bent a little bit into the other direction, but this should be fine. So I think that's about it for physical damage. Now let's get further into getting some power into here and getting this board built up. So now our board is built up. As you can see, we have a CPU provided by the owner of this board. This is in i3 3570k 
and um, we have one stick of DDR3 RAM in here and we have our postcard in here. Also I have another postcard in the PCIe. Want to see if that posts anything. And we have our 24 pin adapter attached and I'm going to be attaching a keyboard for uh, in case we can get any activity uh, uh, with that. And so right now let's see our power consumption. And this looks very very healthy. Uh, about 100 milliamps and we have three VSB already running. I can see that on the PCIe tester and Now I would want to see what happens as soon as we press the power button I maybe want to get actual uh, video output onto here as well Just in case that might happen So let's see we're going to press the power button together and see what this board does Okay, we have about one amp and we are completely stuck. There is nothing happening. So I didn't have a single postcode run on here and I have PCI reset stuck on the tester, on the PCI um, e-tester and I ha haven't had a single postcode running on my, um, on my DDR tester. Um, the first thing I would want to do, uh, the person told me I should be looking around for physical damage. They were looking around for some physical damage already, but I'm going to be going over this and I will have a look if I can find anything. Let me da do that because what I right now expect is we don't have um, access onto the BIOS. So the BIOS is not being read. So this could be like that CPU V core is not running and the CPU is not uh, trying to read the BIOS. And yeah, there might be some other power rail before that missing. So we don't start anything, but let's start with physical inspection. I'm going to be looking around the board and I will catch you. Uh, I will bring you up again if I found anything or we're going to go over to measurements. And right now, around our super IO, I actually was able to find something. As you can see, there's a single resistor uh, right here that is not in its place anymore, as you can see. It actually trying to tear the trace that is going on there. So we're going to be trying to solder this back on and we're going to see if this helps. And right now you can see there has been some very minimal physical damage around this area. And um, the other question would be if there was a, uh, there was something populated here, but I don't think so. But this one, m there might have been something populated here and it's kinda hard to tell if there was anything there or not. But we're going to first try with this resistor soldering it back on and um, I'm going to see if that already changes our outcome of this board. So I've now soldered it back on with some hot air, but I got to say it wasn't very convincing of the way that it connected. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to see if we have continuity. So you should be able to hear my multimeter. And let's see now for, I can see that this trace should lead down here, I'm pretty sure because it goes this way down to here. And I think our connection is completely broken. We have it to there, but we don't have it to the... We don't... Uh, we might have it to the resistor. And the other side is going to go onto this big trace uh, right here that I cannot probe right now. So we're just going to try if this already had a change for our board. And if we are going to see a difference and if this is going to start up. So let's try this one more time. We're going to have our power on and get our power button in and let's see if this already made the difference that we needed. And I can already see postcodes running. That is very, very good sign. And you can see the power consumption jumping. 
and let's see if we can get a picture out of this or not let's see i don't have anything connected right now uh, let's connect this keyboard and see if we have any activity on there and i can't see activity yet on the keyboard um we should be posting about now though i don't have anything on my vga output or on my hdmi that i have connected but this might be because i was uh, only connecting it after i hit the start button so let's quickly oh no i actually have something but you can't see that wait a minute we're going to hit reset and now it should also appear for you and there it is we actually have boot now bios has been reset please decide how to continue lot automat default boot and we're just going to go into our bios very nice that was already it cpu temperature is going quite high but we got v really lucky this time i can't believe it because um the thing is i actually had uh, the the owner of the spot already told me that he was looking around the bot and couldn't say anything um being broken but the good sir already also told me that he doesn't have that good of an eyesight anymore and to be honest catching this small resistor being knocked off to the side like that is basically impossible by the naked eye and we we found it pretty fast to be honest um and it was pretty easy job because the resistor was still there i was able to just put it down solder it down and i'm really happy with that um that is now connected again it now already works again so this is the second time i got a um got a main board off of someone who sent it to me and this time from sweden so thank you very much for trusting me sending this board over giving me the opportunity to look at so such a special board which is like which is basically a rarity because as far as I know you even need to change the kind of BIOS you have here to natively run macOS on, to, on here and I've even found a schematic specifically for this board in, in case I would need it but we got pretty lucky on this one and I think um, the person from Sweden is also going to be very happy about this board so the things I can recommend if you have physical damage or no startup when when you have no postcodes running and nothing getting initialized you don't have anything first thing i would go on would be um to look at physical damage physical damage especially around the sio so around uh, in this case here where we found the damage because the sio was very important for a lot of enable signals and a lot of starting up the pch actually is often very well protected from this because the pch has a heatsink on them and there's very rarely components knocked off around the pch but the sio is so close to the edge of the board and especially uh, close to the pcie connectors that it has damage and the other thing that happens very often is damage around the pcie latches we had that in previous videos before damage around the cpu socket especially around the mounting holes so have a look there damage around close to the socket itself because people putting cpus in and out damage around the mounting holes of the main board itself even though those are mostly covered in a way where there's no too many not too many components around there but that also happened damage around the ddr so where it's get plugged in but this is rare and then damage around the 12 pin connector where something it's knocked off that i, ha I had that before and damage around the uh, 24 pin adapter on the right here i haven't had it so far that around m.2 there was for something damaged and i haven't had anything around SATA. um some in most of the pin headers down here where people would plug stuff into those are um i haven't had anything damaged with them before um there might be something around BIOS, so I would check also that as an area, and maybe around the uh, power button, but I haven't had that before as well. So right now you can see the main bot again from a different view, and I asked the owner how to get into macOS, so he had a hard drive uh, attached with the board. Um, coming to me and I actually got into Mac arrest. So I got some info about this board This board was a Kickstarter project of gigabyte like 10 years ago or something like that and They gave it to some other company to fulfill it and the big problem was um, They included the bootloader into BIOSes, but they were not allowed to 
use bootloaders that actually could be integrated into the virus directly to load macOS because of some copyright infringement. So they prepared everything to make the BIOSes as easy as possible to modify for the community. But there have been rumors that the creators of this board have anonymously or under a different name have released BIOSes for the community so that can easily uh, get access to macOS into the bootloader for this main board. Just to give you some trivia about where this board com comes from. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed uh, this uh, this repair. I hope you learned something. This ca in this case again something about physical damage and how that can instantly ruin your um, your boot up sequence. And hope I see you in the next video. This has been Mainboard Medic. Thank you very much and goodbye.